Well, I'm starting out here at our garage today. This is really going to be mostly a weight loss journey update video, but I had to show you just a couple of things before I get in there at my island to talk about my weight loss. I wanted to show you a new project that Chris has been working on. And I don't know whether you can see over here, but let me go over closer. He purchased a bunch of new landscape lights. He found them on sale. I don't know where, and they're sold out now. He told me, so I'm sorry about that. But this is just to give you an idea. And you can see here, he's gonna dig a trough. And he has put all these lights up and they came on last night and they were so pretty and I didn't get a picture. So in an upcoming video, I will take a picture for you. But they line the entire driveway all the way down to the cul-de-sac. And they look so pretty at night. And now he's gonna get out here today and run some more cable out here in the front yard. We decided not to put it down both sides of the driveway. We thought it would be a little much. <laughs> because it looks pretty pretty awesome at night, but we thought it would be just a little bit too much to have it down both sides. And we went around the neighborhood and looked and pretty much everybody just does it down one side. So, but he's thinking of doing uh, one like in the flower bed or a few in the flower bed there and maybe over there with the wagon wheels and spattered throughout the yard. I'm not sure what he'll come up with, but he is so good with this stuff that I know it's gonna be beautiful. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. So yeah. now I wanted to walk in here and show you just a couple of things really quickly. Here we uh, are. Nothing really has changed too much since you guys were in here the other day, but I did want to show you. I decided, Ryan, you had asked me about the Bunny family. So I decided, well, what in the world? I'll just bring them out and they are going to reside in the foyer this year. <laughs> Again, I'm not doing a lot of decorating for Easter. I just don't have time, you guys. Um, and I still have to redecorate this whole room and maybe finish a couple of other things here in the foyer. So, but I wanted to show you where the bunny family is going to reside. I got this. So anyway, all right, we're gonna head on in here and go to the island and we're gonna talk about my weight loss journey. Yes, we are. But I wanted to bring you those few things at the beginning of the video. So here we go, I have nothing else to haul. And uh, I did take myself some notes and I have my top 10 tips I'm gonna be giving you and some other information. So, all right, I'll be right back in just a second because I can't turn my camera with it on. So I'll be right back. Here I am in front of the camera. How in the world are you guys doing today? It's so good to see you again and welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. I appreciate you guys stopping by here to see what I'm up to today. And what I'm up to is basically a weight loss journey. You guys have been calling for me to do a weight loss journey update video. And it hasn't, it's been a while since I've done a weight loss journey video. And, uh, but I haven't lost a copious amount of weight since I did the last one. Of course, we had a major tragedy in that we lost our sweet eldest daughter, Kristen, to natural causes back in November. So that's been a major blow. Uh, we had Thanksgiving. She passed away the Monday, literally the Monday before Thanksgiving. So we had to get, you know, maneuver and traverse through that. And then we had Christmas and then we had a cruise. So it has been one thing after another, yet I've managed still to lose 
I don't know how many pounds ever since I did the other one, 10 or so or more pounds. And um, a lot of that is stress. You know, I would say some of that is definitely stress, uh, which usually causes me to gain weight. But this time, you know, I lost weight because of the tragedy. And, you know, I, I can't, I usually gain when I'm stressed. I, throughout my whole life, I've gained when I'm stressed. But this time, I've never lost a daughter. As I said the other day, I've never lost a daughter before. So I think that, you know, really knocked me. And I just haven't had a huge appetite. But I am soldiering on, trudging on along. And but I have not strayed away from my weight loss journey, you guys. I am determined to continue to lose weight. I still would like to lose 40 more pounds. Uh, at least, and it might take me, and I keep saying this, if it takes me the rest of my life to lose that 40 pounds, then it's going to take me the rest of my life, you know, but I am going to continue on uh, working on myself, which, uh, you know, I guess how I want to start this, I, I did give make myself some notes. I never make myself notes, you guys, when I talk. I never make myself notes. But I do find that I tend to ramble sometimes. And I know a lot of you say, oh, we don't care if you ramble. But I really want this video to kind of focus in and hone in on how I handle my weight loss journey, you guys. And I think it's important. I, I try so. not to ramble and go off the topic too much. Now, I will expound on my bulleted points here, of course. And I will tell you some stories uh, as we go. But, you know, I think it's important to let you know, first, why I started my journey. Uh, second, when I started my journey. And third, why I do not do any kind of weight loss program. In other words, I don't do Weight Watchers. I don't do Jenny Craig. I don't do whoever else, whatever else. I have figured out how to lose weight and this works for me. So let me just get started uh, with this and, and I'll, start, I'll start with telling you why I started my journey. Uh, you guys, several years ago now, I really injured my knee as I was coming up the steps. And no, I never went to the doctor. I'm just gonna tell you that straight out. Uh, but my knee is much better now because I lost weight, but I had injured it coming up the steps. So that kind of really set me back in my everyday life. I could barely walk. I was using uh, a rollator around the house, as you guys know who've been with me. I, you know, was even using a scooter in the stores around town, which I never do now. I still take a scooter on our cruises because I still do have arthritis and I still have trouble to this day, even after losing 93 pounds, I've lost 93 pounds, I still have a little trouble standing for a hugely long period of time or walking like the length of the cruise ship over and over and over and over again. So, you know, Chris pretty much insists that I take the scooter with me uh, because it does help me. It's a game changer for me and it does help me. And I, you know, I, I'm thinking one day I may not need to take it, but as long as I do, I'm not gonna be too proud to take it because I have come a very, very, very long way mentally, emotionally, and physically. And it started with the physical, you guys. I have to tell you, I was very, after that injury, then it was, that knee was bad. My other knee was aching. My joints were aching. I was miserable. I felt like I couldn't go into a restaurant without everybody turning around and looking at me and going, what is that lady coming in here for? My goodness gracious, you know. I felt self-conscious, in other words. And I am, I'm, I'm just gonna warn you guys here before I take another step further in this video, I am going to be painfully real with you guys. I am not gonna sugarcoat this in any way, shape or form. I'm gonna let you know exactly how I feel. I'm gonna be very candid with you about how I felt before I started this weight loss journey. I need you guys to know how low I really was. No, I never went to a doctor for any kind of medication to help with my moods, my emotions, my weight loss, or anything like that. I just hit bottom. I just hit bottom. This day, I got in the car with Chris after we had been at Longhorn, which we still go 
a lot. Um, every day of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we go to we go to Longhorn, you know. And I got in the car because and I was out of breath. <sighs> when I got in the car, my knee was my knees, both of them were screaming at me. I was achy, I could barely get my seatbelt on and around me. And I just broke down. I just broke down to Chris and I said, I've got to do something. I cannot continue to live like this. I cannot continue this. This I've got to grab hold of myself and do something. And it was right there in that moment, right there in that moment, that my mind, the switch went off in my mind. Now, you guys, I have lost weight and gained weight and lost weight and gained weight and lost weight and gained weight throughout my entire adult life. I'm not even kidding you. I will say I've never been on a weight loss journey this long and been as and has and have been able to sustain myself for so long in the the right mindset. And I I'm hoping, Lord willing, I'm hoping this time I've figured it all out, you know? And I hope that what I say can help you guys figure it out too. If you are needing to be on a weight loss journey. And I'm talking if even if you need to lose two pounds or 20 pounds or 120 pounds, I think, you know, I'm hoping that one thing that I say in this video will help to inspire you to have that switch in your mind go off. Because let's face it, this is what we have to work first. We have to work our mind first and then the rest follows. If we don't turn our brain on to, I am going to lose this weight I'm not going to starve myself. I'm going to do it in a healthy way. And I, if it takes me, however long it takes me, it takes me, you know? So that's why I started my journey because I just hit bottom. I literally hit bottom, you know, and, and I'm not a drinker. I'm not a smoker. I'm not a drug user, anything like that. But I abused food, you guys. I really did. Food was my crutch. And I guess would still be, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the future? I hope I can keep my mind, you know, on, you know, what I know works for me and what I know doesn't work for me, you know? But food has always been a crutch. I've always been an emotional eater. And it has not boded well for me, you guys. I, I and Being a yo-yo dieter is not good for you, you know? Let's face it. So... Anyway, I have been on this weight loss journey. And so I now said, when did I start? I started in July of 2022, as you probably saw with the pictures. And and I, maybe I'll flash up some pictures as I'm talking here. You know, July of 2022, and I was miserable. Yes, I might have a smile on my face because I'm with Maverick, you know, in some of the pictures. And he puts a smile on my face every day. And I might have been with my family in some of those earlier shots there, which always puts a smile on my face no matter what. But inside, I was screaming and crying, and I was not good. So that's why I started and when I started, July of 22. And it is now February of 24, and I've lost 93 pounds to date. Now, and I still have another 40 to lose. I could lose 40 more. You know, the scales tell me I could lose 40 more. So we'll see. Um, and now let me tell you the story of why I don't do fad diets or why I don't even go to Weight Watchers or I don't do anything where anybody else has to keep me in check. I keep myself in check, you guys. I don't need to buddy diet with anybody or, you know, or to, or to keep people on task or that kind of thing. You know, I hear a lot of folks do that and that is fine if that works for them, but it doesn't work for me. I, I want to handle this by myself in my own way, you know? Uh, but I'll tell you why I don't do any fad diets where I have to take supplements or things like that, with, especially with vitamins in them. Uh, and I'm not gonna name any names for any diet programs or anything like that. I'll just say that when I was pregnant with Candace, or before I was pregnant with Candace, I had been on a weight loss program and uh, where I had to take a bunch of vitamins and supplements and whatever. Again, I'm not gonna name it. And uh, I was... Uh, had gone right off of it when I found out I was pregnant, gone right off of it, but then started my prenatal vitamins. Well, I didn't understand about some vitamins are water soluble and what some aren't at that time in my life. I was 23 years old, you know, uh, but I had, or 24 years old, excuse me. I had, uh, one day I had Kristen, our oldest. 
it's really hard to say her name, I'm sorry, <laughs> out on the swing set. And I was swinging her on the swing set, five and a half months pregnant. And I just happened to rub my, my right eye. I just happened to rub it, which left my left eye open. And I was looking, you know, at the house across the street. And when I rubbed my right eye, half the house across the street disappeared. And I'm like, what in the world is that? Like, it was not in my visual field. I couldn't see it. You know, it was obscured. I was like, what in the world? So I called my neighbor and she took Kristen, bless her heart. And I took myself to the right to the eye doctor that day. The eye doctor took a look in my eyes and said, I haven't a clue what's going on. I'm going to send you to a retinal specialist that we have here in town. And so I went from his office over to the retinal specialist's office who got me in, probably because I was pregnant, I'm thinking, throughout this whole day, you know, got me in there. I had three ophthalmologists standing around me going, well, we're not quite sure what's going on with you, but we're going to dilate your eye. We're going to you know, uh, see if we can see what's going on. And they saw a swollen optic nerve and they did me a visual field test. And uh, I had enlarged fine spots in both eyes, not just my left eye, but my right eye too. And they were like freaking out and handed me orange juice and handed me crackers. And they were like, ma'am, we just really don't know what's going on. We're gonna go ahead and call your gynecologist and, you know, we'll send him our recommendations and uh, we want him to check your vitals and make sure that everything else is okay. And, and I had been going, you know, to my monthly appointments and everything and I felt great. <clears throat> Pardon me. I didn't feel like anything was wrong. Anyway, got to my gynecologist. He took my blood pressure. He took everything. Everything looked fine, but he said, they are worried that you have a brain tumor and that you might not live long enough to have your baby, and we want you to go see a neurosurgeon, and we want you to pack a bag and take it with you because we think you're gonna be, you know, put into the hospital and have be in surgery by tomorrow at this time or the next day at this time. And I'm like, what are you saying? You know, what in the world are you saying? So, <clears throat> pardon me, long story short, he said, do you wanna go north or do you wanna go south? Well. Apparently at that time, back in the 80s, we did not have a very great neurosurgeon here in our area. And he said, I know somebody in DC and I know somebody down in Richmond. And Chris was there with me and he said, let's go to Richmond because he knew his way all around. He worked in Richmond and he knew his way around Richmond or he would go to work in Richmond. So anyway, regardless. Uh, so we went to Richmond, went in to this neurosurgeon, got us right in. He walked in the door and took one look at me and said, you don't have a brain tumor. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, well, thank good, thank the Lord. I'm glad I don't, but how do you know? And he goes, I can just tell by looking at you, you know, and, and he had spoken to me for a little bit and, you know, and he did, um, but then he did a neurological test, you know, where you have to put your head back and touch your nose to your, touch your finger to your nose and bend over and stand up real quick. and. I'm sure for those of you who've had a neuro exam, you know what I'm talking about. He took me through the paces there and everything was fine. I was had great balance. I didn't have any issues. I was five and a half months pregnant, you know. And he said, I think I know what's going on with you. Uh, he said, but I want to send you over to the hospital uh, for a CAT scan, for a non-contrasting CAT scan. Contrasting CAT scan is when they use the nuclear medicine well, I had a CAT scan where they did not use nuclear medicine. They just wanted to take a look at my brain. They didn't need, if there was something in there, he said, if there's something, if we see something in there, then we'll need to do the nuclear test to see what's, you know, our veins and arteries or whatever are leading to it. But for now, we're just going to see if there's anything in there. So I got over there and uh, and he said, try to put your worries away. He said, I really don't think there's, they're going to find anything, but we need to check just to be sure. And we need to get you a spinal tap too. So we went over to the hospital and uh, they got me right in. And I'm telling you, they covered me up with the lead aprons. You know, they covered me up from neck to my toes. I had three of those aprons on. I was like, oh my word, you guys, these are so heavy. And they said, we're wanting to protect that baby. We need to protect that baby, you know? <laughs> scary time for me you guys I have to be honest 
Anyway, if any of you have ever had a CAT scan, you've heard it clunk around your head. And Chris is pretty good in the uh, nuclear department. He's an engineer. And uh, we were the last people of the day to get in there. And that radiologist, I know, should not have done this, but he had Chris in there with him, looking at each section of my brain going, all clear, all clear, all clear, all clear. I did not have a brain tumor. Two days later, thank God, I mean, you know, I did not have a brain tumor. So yeah. two days later, I was admitted to the hospital in Richmond there that he was, that neurosurgeon was affiliated with. And he came in and he did a spinal tap on me to check the spinal fluid levels in my brain. They were fine, they were normal. And bottom line is I had something called pseudo tumor cerebri. It was a fake brain tumor. I have never had to take one pill for this. So many other people, you guys, have problems. And I know some of you who watch me and have heard this story before have let me know that you have pseudotuber cerebri and have fought the fight that is pseudotuber cerebri, you guys. And uh, I will encourage you to Google it. I don't want to go into details here, uh, but a lot of people have to have a shunt put in their brain to keep the spinal fluid um, at a healthy level. and. I mean, it can be quite debilitating. It can be quite debilitating. And I didn't have to have anything like that. And he just told me, he said, you have pseudotumor cerebri caused by an overdose of vitamin A. Vitamin A, I was taking a lot of vitamin A before I got pregnant. And then when I went off of that, but I went and I started on my uh, prenatal vitamins, they were high in vitamin A. And he said, you can never take vitamin A in concentrated form like that for the rest of your life. He said, or you will continue to see spots and, you know, and whatever, and it could really cause you problems. He said, you can eat vitamin, pardon me. He said, you can eat vitamin A like in carrots and other vegetables and things like that. That won't, that is not the same thing. Vitamin A is a concentrating vitamin. So it had concentrated and concentrated and concentrated. And I am very sensitive to that. And I came up with this pseudotumor treatment. So I swore right then, back however many years ago, Candace is what, 36 now. And she was born, by the way, she was born healthy as could be. Thank the Lord. She was 10 pounds and beautiful. And um, I was so blessed. We were so blessed that I didn't have anything catastrophic wrong with me, you know. Uh, but for a time there, I was really, really worried that I wouldn't live long enough to have Candace, you know? So anyway, that's why I don't do fad diets, you guys. That is exactly the reason why I don't do fad diets because I, I did that one and it just it, it threw me for a loop, you guys. So that's why I diet the way I diet. And the way I diet, if you want to call it that, is... I make good choices when I eat. I Now, I have cut out a lot of my carbohydrates. I do eat some, though. I haven't cut them all out. I, but I don't eat a lot of bread. I don't eat a lot of pasta. I don't eat a lot of potatoes or rice or anything like that. I don't eat a lot of sweets, which are my big weakness. Uh, and I have increased my protein. I eat either chicken or fish or beef. Yes, beef. In fact, I eat a good bit of beef. You know, uh, tuna fish, things like that. I eat protein, vegetables, salad. Those are pretty much my staples, you guys. Uh, and what I eat through a day, I'll tell you what I eat in a day, is uh, I, in the morning, every morning. Now, there for a while, I was eating eggs, a couple of eggs, scrambled eggs. Uh, I would scramble them in just a smidge of butter. Yes, just a little bit of butter. And some olive oil, sometimes maybe and uh, I would just do eggs and then maybe a piece of cheese in with the eggs to give myself some protein and some dairy, you know, and uh, I would have a half of a grapefruit with it. I love grapefruit, uh, but that got old really quick. And I tell you the truth, I yearn for something a little bit sweet sometimes. So I, a while back now, have transitioned into eating a quarter cup of quick oats, of oatmeal. I eat a quarter cup of oatmeal and then I put four, I put a cup of water with a quarter cup of oatmeal and I cook it for a minute and a half. And then I put a crystallized brown sugar in it. 
and that's my breakfast every morning. And I eat it without fail, without fail. Yes, I now believe that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I was told that so many times throughout my life. Oh, you but and I never ate breakfast. Never ate breakfast until this diet or weight loss journey. I want to say diet, weight loss journey. I never did because I didn't want to eat the calories. You know, oh, I want to save my calories for whatever I'm going to eat later in the day. No. Eat that breakfast. Eat a little something. Eat a little something. It's a bowl of cereal. Eat some oatmeal. Eat a couple of eggs. Eat if you don't want the yolks. Eat just egg whites. Whatever. Have something. You know, have a little bit of grapefruit. Have a banana. Have a fruit. You know, something. Eat something in the morning, you guys, because that will kickstart your metabolism and get you going for the day. Give you a little bit of energy. Give you a little boost, you know as you start your day. So I have, right now, anyway, as I'm talking to you in this video, I eat oatmeal every morning. Then, as you know, Chris and I go out to lunch every day. And as I just mentioned, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we go to Longhorn. And lately, I've been having a hamburger patty, no bread, no cheese, but I really like their hamburgers, and that really gives me something that I love, you know? If I don't have the hamburger, I'll have a six ounce, and it's it's a quarter pounder, I think, or half pound burger, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, and But their chicken, I'll have a piece of grilled chicken, no bread again, uh, with their seasoning on it, which is good. And then I'll either have, usually lately now, I've been having their chowder, uh, which is 250 calories for a bowl, a crock of their chowder. Sometimes I'll have French onion soup. I don't have it too often now, but sometimes I will because it's really salty. So I kind of watch that. But, you know, every now and again, I'll have the French onion soup, but I'll have them hold the bread, no bread in it, and I'll have them cut the cheese in half. So basically, I have onion soup with a little bit of cheese in it. That's my French onion soup, you know. Uh, sometimes I'll have a side salad. Uh, but I'll take my own salad dressing. My salad dressing that I'm eating now, and I don't eat a little bit, I eat a lot of salad dressing, you guys. Salad dressing is one of my major weaknesses. I have to admit it. Uh, but I eat Hidden Valley Ranch Light. In the past, I've eaten Catalina French. I like that. Uh, Good Seasons, I think it is Italian. Ken's Light Caesar. That is delicious. If you guys like that kind of thing, that is delicious. And uh, there's a boar's head ranch that's very good too. A light ranch or something like that. I think it's from boar's head and that's very good. Um, but right now I'm eating Hidden Valley Ranch Light and I love it. I love it. And uh, so anyway, so that's our lunch every day. Uh, when, the, when we don't go to Longhorn, we actually go to Arby's. We go to Arby's and I get a roast beef sandwich, sands the bread, hold the bread, and a few curly fries. Chris and I split an order of curly fries because he gets a fish sandwich. I don't like their fish sandwich. I like their beef, you know. And But he gets a fish sandwich. I get the roast beef with no bread. And then we split the fries. And then there are times we go to a nice uh, Chinese restaurant that we have around here. And I get a bowl of wonton soup there. And I get beef and mushrooms and a spring roll. I tell them I don't want the egg roll. I get a spring roll, just one, and I have them to hold the rice. I don't get rice. So I just eat pretty much the protein, you know, the, the beef and mushrooms and the wonton soup and the spring roll. So that's what I have about once a week. You know, I have that. So that's what I do for my lunch. And lunch is, is a, pretty much a larger meal than our dinner. Uh, for dinner, every evening, Chris makes us a salad, as I mentioned in the other video the other day. He makes us a salad, and I have it in a big bowl. I have a big bowl of salad, and then I'll have a protein. I usually have either a piece of chicken. We usually keep chicken or a turkey or some kind of protein pre-cooked and ready to go. All we have to do is pull it out of the refrigerator and stick it in the microwave, heat it up a little bit. So I'll have either that a piece of whatever we have in the refrigerator. Right now it's chicken. And Chris brines his chicken, and I don't know what his brine is, but he brines his chicken. Chris cooks the proteins. He cooks them. He's a wonderful cook. He also cooks a lot of different soups. He cooks a cabbage and bean soup. I'm not crazy about the cabbage part, but I love the beans. I love beans of any size thing. He cooks uh, shrimp creoles sometimes. He cooks... 
uh, chicken soup sometimes. I do a chicken soup. I do a uh, vegetable soup. You know, so we, we always have some kind of soup that we can pull out of the freezer. We make a big batch of it, then we freeze bags of it. So we can just pull out a bag, you know. And, uh, and I, so I eat a salad and a protein or a salad and soup. And if I eat the salad and protein, I usually have a vegetable. I'll eat a can of green beans, a can of stewed tomatoes. That's one of my, I'm on a big stewed tomato kick right now since I can't have my summer tomatoes. I'll open a can of stewed tomatoes and just eat the stewed tomatoes like that. I love them. I don't even heat them up. Put a little pepper. My mouth's watering. I want stewed tomatoes tonight for dinner. You know, I'm thinking about it. Isn't that weird? But that's pretty much what I have. And then later on in the evening, there are times, not every evening, but sometimes I'll allow myself 100 calories of whatever I want, whether that's a little cup of yogurt, whether that's a fruit. If I eat in between meals, it's always fruit for me or a couple of uh, dried pineapple. I get like the dried pineapple packages from um, Lidl. Uh, we get dried pineapple, so I'll have a few of those and that also gives me a little bit of sweetness. I'll have a little peppermint patty. I'm back on that kick again. Just a little, the little snack size peppermint patty. I'll have one or two of those after dinner as a little bit of dessert. I love Ritz crackers. I'll go grab five or six Ritz crackers. I do not starve, you guys. I absolutely do not starve. So, and that's what I do every day, day in and day out when we're here at the house. When we're here at home and we're not traveling or we're not going to an event. When we go to an event, I eat whatever is served. And yes, I eat dessert. When we go on our cruises, I allow myself extra, a, a piece of bread every day. I allow myself a dessert every day. I allow myself an ice cream cone now and again, which is like one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, other than a Krispy Kreme donut, chocolate covered Krispy Kreme donut with the white cream. Mm, mm, mm. That's my very favorite. <laughs> or a piece of cheesecake. You know, I'm human and I am going to eat when I, I'm not going to go on a vacation and try to diet, you guys. I'm just decided when I first started this journey, I'm not going to do that to myself anymore. I mean, that's just torture to have to go through something like that. I am on no, I, I, I'm not in a race to lose this weight. Uh, I will say that I was, uh, and I'm very regimented, I'm very regimented, but I was more, um, conscious of eating before I got about 50 or 60 pounds off eating like on cruises and things like that. I was a little bit more careful than I have been in the last two cruises, which probably has slowed my weight loss down just a little bit because I have allowed myself that dessert every night. And I think the very first cruise I went on after I started this weight loss, I don't think I allowed myself quite that, but you know what? It's okay because I've lost pretty much all the weight I gained on my last cruise and I'm, and I'm going to continue on down the scales or I'm, and it might be very, very, very slowly, but I, I'm, I'm not, I'm a turtle in this race. I'm not the hare. I just want to feel, I feel so much better. My knees are so much better. My emotions are so much better other than, of course, we've been dealing with our tragedy and that has sent me for a loop. Uh, and to acknowledge that too, I had mentioned this in the other video, but I remember you guys right after our sweet girl passed away and I kind of grabbed myself up and said, now listen here, I'm going to use your word, Miss Barbara. Barbara always calls me Missy. <laughs> listen here, Missy. <laughs> I love you, Barb. <laughs> you will not gain weight because of this tragedy. You will not. Kristen wouldn't want you to be unhealthy again. She would want you to stay on this path and stay on this journey. So that is helping me continue on, you guys, knowing that Kristen was such a support for me in this weight loss journey, you know? Sorry. Anyway, all right, now, <clears throat> what I did is I wrote down, I, I had shared of uh, five top tips, was I had a question from one of you guys. And that kind of gave me the idea. I said, well, why don't I give them my, my top 10 tips for starting and staying on a weight loss journey? And I'm going to click through these because we've, we're already at like 30 some minutes here. So I'm going to click through them and just we'll expound if I think we need to any, but I'm just going to click through them. Okay. Uh, number one, if you have health issues happening, this is important, you guys. 
Please consult your doctor before beginning any weight loss journey and ask for advice that is specific to your health situation. Please don't try to do what I'm doing if your health will not sustain what I'm doing. Please, please, please check with your doctor before you start any weight loss program. Uh, number two, the first thing to do is to wrap your brain around wanting to begin a weight loss journey. And I explained that a little bit. Number three, no matter how much weight you have to lose, it is doable. Let me repeat that. It is doable. You can do it. You can do it. I don't care if you have 20, 30, 50, 93, 103, 133. It is doable, you guys. Don't ever think you cannot do it. Because as soon as you say, oh, I can't do that. That's that. That is too far away. I will never reach my goal. I will never lose that much weight. Don't ever say that to yourself because you're, you're stopping yourself before you even get started, you guys. So don't do that to yourselves. Don't do that. Especially at those of us who are aging, you know, my goodness. Um, number four, just begin. No matter when you decide to start, don't procrastinate until after this holiday or after that event or wait till tomorrow. You know, if you're sitting here after this video today, after you've watched this video today, you go, okay, Arlene's inspired me. I'm going to start right now. Start right now. Modify your dinner. Take out your carbohydrates for dinner. Just, you know, and just eat the protein. Add in a salad and eat a vegetable. And don't eat bread. Just try it. Try it. And, and just eat enough protein, you guys, because the protein is what will fill you up and it will get your metabolism going, you know? So, okay, number five, eat three meals a day. And yes, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And I've explained what I mean by that. Number six, drink lots of water and exercise if you can. Now, I drink, I have tripled, quadrupled my water intake. I used to drink a lot of diet sodas. I still do drink a diet soda at lunch. Yes, I do. And I will have about a half of a can of a caffeine-free Diet Coke for dinner. But other than that, I drink my tea in the morning and I drink water, water, water. I will go to the sink and guzzle two or three glasses of water. I don't know what it is. It, it helps to keep my skin in better shape. Uh, it helps my digest, digestion better. Uh, in, in every way, drinking water, increasing. And I never realized that. Everybody says, oh, drink a lot of water. And I was like, who needs water? It's okay, you know. Well, it does. It's made a big difference for me. And when I say exercise, I cannot necessarily do a, like, I used to walk when I was in my 30s and 40s. I used to walk four miles a day, you guys. And I was about this big. And it really does help to bring the weight off. But right now, I cannot walk. I do do so much more, though, with my decorating and going up and down the steps. And I am never sedentary or I, I, I had gotten when I was so heavy, very sedentary, but I will get up and make myself get up. Sometimes I'll think, oh man, I've been sitting here two or three hours and I'll get up and start moving. Not only for just the movement, but just for my joints. My joints get all like, ooh, I'm not happy sitting here all this time. You know, I need to get up and I need to do a little moving. Let me lubricate these joints a little bit. Let me get up and let me move, you know. And I feel so much better. And I'll just walk around the house and I'll just decorate and do this and do that. Walk up and down the driveway. You know, I'm getting better and better and better and better, but it's a slow process for me. If you are able though, just start start doing something. Get on a treadmill, walk, do, you know, do a little something. You know, sit at the sit at the couch and move your legs and pull them up and down, move your arms up and down and, you know, just get, the, get your blood flowing a little bit. I, I don't mean, you know, go to the gym and kill yourself because <laughs> Lord knows I don't do that, but I do try to move a little bit more than I did. Number seven, don't get on that scale every day. I need to tell myself this, you guys, because I do get on the scale every day. And I get frustrated sometimes. It's like, ah, well, I went up a quarter of a pound. Well, I went down a quarter of a pound. Well, I went, you know, down an eighth of a pound or whatever, you know. Try not to get on the scale every day because that'll just get frustrate you. Number eight, if you are not losing as fast as you think you should, try your best to stay the course. 
And sometimes what I'll do and what has given me a, like a little jump start is I'll just go ahead and have a day where I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'll have spaghetti and garlic bread and a couple of cookies and that kind of thing. And sometimes that'll jump start me a little bit and then just go right back on the diet, the eating regimen like I do, you know, when I get back from our cruises and stuff. That's that's a good key too, is I always get right back when I come home, I'm always right back to the same eating schedule as I was before we left, you know? So just a couple of thoughts there. Uh, nine, if you eat between meals, make good choices. In other words, choose, you know, uh, fruit mostly, uh, you know, and make your make good choices in that vein. And number 10, give yourself grace. Give yourself grace as you work through the process. If it's like me, it is not, this has been a long process. I have never taken this long in my life to lose this much weight. And I've lost 100 pounds twice in my life, you guys, to be honest with you. And always gained it back and always gained more back. But I didn't do it the right way. I starved myself, you guys. I starved myself both of those times. And it came off really quick. And I was running, running around like a crazy woman back with my kids when my kids were little. And, you know, nothing could stop me. I was like a train, a, a freight train, you know, going, 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 going. And this time, it is, it's slow going. It's very, 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 very slow, you know. And it's working. It's working for me, you guys. So I encourage you, don't go, don't give up. Don't think it's a race and give yourself grace. Uh, and I just stay, I just wrote a note right before I sat down here and said, I will stay the course. And what I mean by that is I, I will stay this course until I'm done. Now I feel so much better when I walk into a restaurant or when I get on an airplane and I don't have to ask for a seatbelt extension or I go to sit in the theater to watch a show, which we didn't even do last time, Barb. I can't even believe I didn't do that. But, um, when we are on the ship, so we go to a show, I couldn't fit in the seat hardly. Now I can fit in the seat, you know, and uh, I, I, just so many things like that. So many things. I was so heavy, you guys. I was so, so heavy. And now I'm feeling a lot better. So I really do, I've given myself motivation to stay the course and to keep going and to keep trying to lose the rest of this weight. And even though I feel like I look okay, I feel like I could look a little bit better. I feel like I could feel a little bit better, I, although I feel great. I really do. But you know, I don't, I don't want to ever say I'm done. Somebody asked me how, uh, the other day in a question, asked me how did, how would, it, she asked how did I think I would maintain my weight? And I, and she said, or maybe you don't know yet. And I think that's the correct answer. I really don't know. I think I would probably start adding back in some carbohydrates a little bit at a time and see if I can maintain it that way. And it would just be trial and error. You know, it would just be trial and error. So Anyway, you guys, I'm going to hush now because I've been talking pretty much nonstop. I see 41 minutes on my on my phone here. I don't know whether I've been able to cut it down any at all. Plus, I had the little footage from outside and right in the foyer there. So I'm going to hush for now. Uh, I hope this has helped you. I hope that uh, you've been inspired just a little bit. And, of course, if you have any questions within reason, you're welcome to ask them and I will try to answer them either in another video or under your comment. So anyway, uh, let me take a moment to ask you to please subscribe if you would. This is one of those videos where I really didn't do any decorating, but just chit chatted with you. And again, this video was much called for for several months now. I've been y'all been calling for me to do an update. So here we go. Again, I probably didn't say a lot new uh, than I did in the last update, but Hopefully, I did say something that you can grasp onto and will help to inspire you in your own life journey or weight loss journey. Uh, but please do subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the all when the notification bell uh, drop down menu comes up, hit like and leave me a comment. Thank you guys so much in advance. Thank you also in advance for all of your comments uh, and let me tell you, when you see my heart show up, you're going to know that I saw your comment and I took it to my heart. I just can't get back to everybody, but I do read everything, I promise. With all of that said, I'm going to go into my final words and say thank you all so much for stopping in here today, 
for those of you who might be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain. I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, mm, not sure when next week, we'll go on to do some more decorating and other things. <laughs> but until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.